Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Booktube and today we're going to be talking about Weaving Fate by Aidan Wachter. I am pretty confident that most of you know who Aidan Wachter is. You've probably already read the book. I'm not sure. I just got to this book. So here's the thing about this book. This has been in my to be read pile for a very long time but as you know, being the mood reader that I am, I have been on a Lucy H. Pierce kick for a minute and the pile just keeps getting bigger. So now I've got the two piles next to me. I've got three piles over there. I have to find a better system, everybody, because things get lost. This got lost in the pile. It's hard to remember. I don't know what I was doing. I was kind of trying to clean what is the situation on my desk. And I saw the spine. I'm like, oh God, I want to read this book. So I read the book and I'm really excited about it. So let me just jump into it. I'm going to read his bio read the table of contents, and then just jump into the book. Aidan Walker is well known in magical, pagan, and occult circles as a highly respected talismanic jeweler. He first encountered the magical arts in 1982 and began serious study in 1987, largely as a method of gaining control over unwanted possession experiences. He is an eclectic practitioner, having worked with various systems of witchcraft, chaos magic, ceremonial magic, folk magic, and freestyle sorcery. He's an animist, and his work is spirit-driven and results-oriented. He counts among his spiritual forebears, Austin Osmond Spare, Rosalind Norton, Dorji Benzeroff, and Jan Fries. He lives in the mountains of the desert southwest with his wife, a pack of goats and dogs, and a small army of chickens, which is really sweet. So the table of contents is a pretty slim, simple one. So you're not going to get a whole lot of context about the book from the table of contents, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. There's a dedication, there's acknowledgments, and there's a list of illustrations because he's an artist and he's got these beautiful talismanic sigils throughout the book. He created the sigils for the cover of the book. So you've got an introduction, you've got background and base. And the background and base, this is not listed here in the content, table of contents, but I want to just tell you about the book as I go. This is a very specific method of magic that he has created for himself. So he's giving you the background and the base for what that is. The roots of the tree, the soul spirit complex, liminal gnosis, telling true lies, the black book, walking the corridor, the fever stone, liberation, the language of desire, fear, death, and the big wave. And then there's an epilogue along with some references which are great and suggested reading. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in terms of these three methods of magic that he has created, but I want to give you the premise, which is he really comes from a place of an orientation of we are co-creators with the fates or the weavers or the norns, whichever grouping you relate to the most. And if you don't, then the, he calls the others as weavers, weavers of our fate. There isn't this solid, concrete, locked in place carved in stone fate that we are all destined to live out whether we want to or not we are witches we co-create our reality every single day it's what our magic is about right so he has these methods that are so exciting to me because in many ways he's fleshed out and made concrete something that i do very loosely and internally not the way he does it here where I have very elaborate internal visualizations and architectures around the things that I want to create for my future. I weave those things first in my internal world or in the astral realm, both, in order to kind of set the tone, set the pace, set the terrain up for this thing to come into fruition in the future. It's one of the ways I do magic. The way he does it is something called the black book. And the black book is doesn't have to be black. He talks about why black and what that means, and it doesn't have to actually be black in color. But the black book is basically a journal where you decide how you want to weave your fate or your future in a particular area of your life or your entirety of the life that you have. And you journal as if it's happening. You're journaling into the future, right? So you're telling true lies about a future that you're co-creating and you're weaving into your future. An example would be, let's say that right now I'm unhappy with my job. It's kind of a dead end job. I don't like it. I want something different, but I want something specific that I want to create for myself that I want to spell for. I would go to my black book and I would write a journal entry, no dates, just as if it's happening. You would go to the journal, right? And you would write a scenario in as much detail, sensory detail as you possibly can about how this new future is unfolding in real time. It's a true lie. It's not something that's happened yet, but it's something that you're 
you're weaving. So an example would be Dear Diary. Today I was at that yummy coffee shop that I love. I was having that cappuccino and I swear to God, they make such great coffee that I can live there forever. And I happened to bump into that woman, Jane Smith. Jane Smith is that woman. Remember, I've told you about her so many times. She's in all the magazines. People are talking about how just innovative and inspiring the way she runs her company is. Everyone has gotten a chance to be super creative and be collaborative. And anyway, I ran into her. I recognized her. I excused myself. I apologized. And I said, oh my God, I just need to say that I really admire the work that you do. It's really inspiring because of all these different ways that I really would love to be able to work and contribute to a bigger vision with. And Oh my God, dear diary, she invited me to go see the offices where all of this magic takes place. And so she gave me a tour. We totally hit it off. We both love the coffee shop. I had no idea that she goes there all the time, but we both just bought extra coffee. We took it with us. She gave me this tour and I got to see this amazing space where all this amazing collaborative creative work takes place in such an abundant environment. And she then sat down and with me in her office and we just kept chatting like as if we were the best friends from long ago. And she started asking me about what I love to do, what my talents were, what it is that my vision is for my career. And she offered me a job. Okay, that is like a really kind of bad example, but it's a kind of a decent example of how you would use the book. You would weave this tale with sensory imagery and all the things, right? You want it to be this very detailed, very real, true lie of this thing. And you continue to work in this book in this way to flesh out the story, to flesh out this reality. And you weave other things that you want to create into that thing. So if all you want really is, I want another job, you would write about that. Yes, but you would weave other parts of your life into it. Things that are both reality and aspirational in order to augment the energy of this creation. And it turned me on in so many ways because I love words. I love writing. When I construct an intention for a spell, I mean, I spent a lot of time journaling and constructing the sentence to be exactly the way it needs to be. The words matter to me. This is a form of magic that would be really great for someone who relates to it that way, that loves to journal, that loves to write, that loves the power of weaving a really potent narrative. This is just one of the ways to use these tools. He's got this, he's got something called the corridor, and he's got something called the fever stone as a way to not only weave your fate in the future, but to weave your fate from the past. It is really powerful work. I highly, highly recommend everybody get this book. It's just juicy. It really speaks to that part of me that believes in story and believes in being a co-creator and weaving your fate. I underlined and took, I don't know how many notes in all of the margins. Like, I mean, come on. It's just all of it. It's everywhere. Notes all the places. I am excited to actually do the entire thing. He talks about how to consecrate the book, the pen, using bodily fluids to kind of seal the deal and the things that you're writing in the book. Like this is really great magic. It's really powerful magic that he created this system for himself. This is his own personal work that he has developed over time after having learned all these different systems. This is what works for him. This is what he's come up with for himself on his own. And then he writes about it and shares it with all of us, which I highly appreciate. And it's one of the reasons why I love this book. I love what he's done. I've given it a five stars. It feels like it's a complete explanation of how to use this. You can take it. You can run with it. You don't ever have to check in with the book again. But what's great about it is that he's got an amazing community. It's a really robust community on Facebook. And they talk about their work with the Black Book and the Corridor and the Fever Stone. So you have a community available to you around this type of work. Really exciting perspective and a way of approaching magic and manifestation. I don't think I can say enough about this. The new moon is coming at the time of me recording this. The new moon, I think, is coming in a week and a half. I will be consecrating my Black Book. I already have the book. I've got a pen. I need to add a couple of herbs and oils and different things to my little black book working kit. I have had some moments of deep excitement over some of the books that I read. This book is one of those books where I'm just like, I am so excited to just dive in. This feels so me that I love it. So weaving fate. It's hyper sigils, changing the past and telling true lies. If you've read this, if you're doing this work, I'd love to hear about your results and how you're experiencing it down below in the comment section. You'll probably be hearing about this book in some way or another in the future from me, probably on our IG lives or something, just because 
I'm really excited to just dive into this as a form of manifestation and of magic and of weaving my future and my past. There is just as much, I think, powerful, revelatory information in this book about how to weave your future as much as there is about rewriting your past in a way that really affects you today and it affects the black book working for your future. It's beautiful. I'm really excited. Aiden, thank you so much. It's really very helpful, very informative, very revelatory. I also feel silly. Like, how did I not come up with this myself? It's a little arrogant to even ask that, but because so much of my own internal work is this, but internalized, that I never thought to do this in writing kind of just like bugs me about myself because it's such a natural, intuitive, instinctive thing for me to do to write. And the written word is so important and plays such a big part in my magic anyway, but in small doses, this is like, <gasps> I could spend days and weeks just carving out time to just write my true lies to my heart's content for the rest of my future. Do you know what I mean? There you go. Love it. Get it. I love it. Tell me when you get it and tell me what you think about it and tell me how it's working for you. I am going to be consecrating my tools and my book and my whole setup um, for the new moon coming up. But I'm very excited to start this method of magic. So there you go. Have a wonderful week and uh, I'll see you on next Monday. Mwah. Take care. Bye.